Hey, what's going on guys? IO Studios here for another video. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to create hair in Cinema 4D and Octane Render. So uh, yeah, it's actually pretty simple if you know how to do hair in Cinema 4D normally, but if you don't, I'm going to teach you how to do that as well. So um, yeah, essentially a uh, subscriber requested that I make a tutorial on how to do fur, which is done with hair as well. So um, yeah, we're going to be making some animal fur today, essentially. So let's get started. Uh, I'm going to add an object, HDRI environment. I'm going to add a plane, yeah, and this is where our hair is going to grow off of. So let's do our lighting first. I'm just going to open up an image texture here. I'm going to go to a, let's see here, a texture that I have. It's just a, um, let's see here, some studio lighting, HDRIs. You can find these online for free or just make your own with like one octane light, but I'm just going to grab this studio lighting here. <clears throat> so load that in. Let's start the render. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a pretty nice, pretty nice lighting setup. So, um, that's that. Now let's get started making the actual hair. So make sure you have this land selected. Make sure you have the plane selected. Sorry. Uh, go up to simulate and hair object, add hair, <clears throat> just like that. You can see Octane will immediately begin rendering it. Um, so we don't need to do too much with, um, getting the cinema 4d hair to work with Octane. That's already built in. Um, so just like that. Uh, for our hair, we're going to grab a segment of about eight, segment of about eight. Um, in the guides here, we're going to set it to polygon area. We're going to increase the count. Now, here's something you should take note of. For your final render, you generally want a count of about you know, 10,000. Um, or sorry, sorry, 100,000. You want to count about 100,000 for your final render. But because I don't want this tutorial to take you know, forever to render while we're making it, I'm just going to use a value of 10,000 as we're kind of messing around with it like that okay the length about 40 we'll do 35 should work <clears throat> and we're going to increase this this amount later uh, in the hair section here you also want to make sure that you have 10,000 because if your guides you can have like a million guides but if the hairs aren't set higher than what they are it won't render more than that so uh, anyway we're going to get started with the actual hair material so we're going to open this thing up and uh, for the thickness, uh, the root should probably be about 0.2, and the tip should be 0 0.05. Variation, we can do 0.1. You can see it's not very thick hair right now, but we will, um, you know, we'll add more hairs later, and that will look much better. So, color. Now we could go ahead and use a gradient or some noise and stuff to do the color here, um, but a much simpler way of doing it is uh, grabbing a texture. Let me just go to my desktop here. Texture, just a fur texture, and um, I found this one online. Uh, it's nothing. Um, it's nothing very complicated, um, but I just found it online, and I don't think it is free to use for uh, commercial purposes. So I'm gonna leave a download link in the description, just if you guys want to try it out. But I'd recommend finding one that is um, that you're allowed to use commercially if you're gonna do this for a commercial project. So anyway, I'm gonna load that into our um, roots here for the color now um the thickness okay we've already done that specular okay strength you don't want a lot of specular um in my opinion at least for to look good so strength about 30 sharpness 15 secondary we can do 40 the sharpness of uh, we'll do 15 oops the top one should be like maybe we'll do sharpness of 10 uh, back specular we can do by maybe 40 percent like that <clears throat> okay uh length 85%, variation, 10%, uh, amount, we keep that full, uh, okay, frizz, uh, whoops, I'm going to save here, frizz, um, you can see it frizzes up like a lot of frizz, makes the hair very erratic, <laughs> um, but if we bring it down to a value of like 15, something reasonable, it gives it a bit of variation without being too, without being too kind of unnatural there, um, <clears throat> Kink, bring this up to about 10%. Clump, we can also leave that at its default values um, because it looks pretty good as it is. And um, actually, we want the variation to about five. Anyway, we're bringing it down, sorry. Now, this looks okay, but we can make it look much better. So this, the hair is just kind of standing straight up. And that's okay. But we want the hair to be kind of maybe flat and like combed down like on actual fur. So to do that, we're going to go up to Simulate, Hair Tools, and Brush. Now we're going to increase the radius a bit. 
and you just want to kind of choose the direction that you want to brush it in. So we're going to go from this point, this side to this side. So we're just going to kind of hold down left click and drag, and we're just going to kind of use our brush here to you know, from a few different angles, kind of brush the hair in that general direction. You know, maybe decrease the radius now. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to make it a bit more, trying to make it a bit more detailed. You know, give it a bit more uh, character, if I can say that. You know. It's a bit random that we've kind of painted in. And this is really nice because, you know, generally you're, you're not applying hair to an actual plane like this. You know, you're applying it to a model of probably an animal or something like that. And it means that you can kind of just paint on it um, like a brush and, um, you know, have the hair go in the direction that you want. So it's, it's really easy to use in that way. Uh, I'm going to brush it down a bit more like this. I think, I think we're pretty much okay. Just like that, maybe. Whoops, that's not how we should do it. You really want to make sure that you have a kind of uniform angle for the uh, for all the things that you're, you know, that they're all going in the same direction, kind of thing. Or it looks pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, just like that, <clears throat> looks pretty good. Uh, we will work on uh, in the hair material here. Let's see here. I think everything is good here. Yeah, everything's all right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and increase the hair count now and see what it looks like. So, I'm going to add another zero to that. And another zero. Whoops. Okay, so this is going to lag a lot. This is a lot of um, a lot of hairs, and it's going to lag quite considerably. So, we might need to increase the thickness of the hair, but um, <clears throat> we just wait here. Okay, that lagged quite a bit. I'm going to increase the guides. Okay, this is again going to lag probably quite a bit. So we're just going to give it a second, give it a second to uh, to do its thing. And um, <clears throat> yeah, we have we have fur here, so this is I'd say pretty successful. Uh, we can change our render settings as well and make this look nicer. Uh, I'll just show you the difference. So we'll let it render here a bit, and I'll show you the difference. I'll show you why we change our render settings. Okay, store render buffer. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and I'm just going to change GI clamp to 1, make sure everything's set to path, tra path tracing, filter size 1, increase our parallel, max tile samples, settings, priority, make sure that's set to, actually I want to set it to medium because I'm recording, should have been on medium before. Um, you can change this, I generally like to do a, line whoops, a linear response with a gamma of 2.2. And I think color grading is best done outside of the program, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just leave it like that. Um, and our gamma of one. Generally, though, I in a normal project, I use a linear, but you know, for now, we'll just leave it like that. And you can see here's before changing the render settings and after. And it's just more, you know, path tracing just kind of lights it up more, gives it more global illumination, um, renders faster, you know. So just, that's why we change our settings, because it gives a very subtle, but it's nice. It renders faster if we change our settings, and it looks a bit nicer. So yeah, guys, that is that. Um, you can see we made some fur here in Cinema 4D and Octane. Um, and obviously, you can apply this to, you know, anything you'd like. For example, a sphere. You know, if you wanted to do fur for the sphere, um, you could do that. Um, generally, obviously, you'd be using it on a model, but this is just doing it on a plane, so it's you know, kind of simple to do. But yeah, that's that. Um, this tutorial, again, was requested by a subscriber. So if you guys have any tutorial requests or anything like that, just leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to them as soon as I can. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, so yeah, if you did, leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all later. Bye.